Hello, hello, this is Laiyosh. Welcome back to Life Study Library. Today we're going to be talking about a certain activity that might make people smarter. And before I go on, I gotta make sure you all understand what I mean by this. So first of all, it's extremely hard for you to become smarter or improve your cognitive ability because the great majority of human cognitive ability is predetermined by genetics. The chance of you breezing through school and getting accepted to the Ivies and all that stuff is something that's encrypted in your genes the second you're born. And improving on this aspect of your cognitive ability is super difficult, if not impossible, because it's encrypted in your genes. But that's not the kind of smartness I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about smartness that can be improved with effort, which is the non-cognitive ability. So to briefly explain this, this includes things like motivation, integrity, and social skills. These are all stuff that's related to the intellectual skills, but are not something that's predetermined, like how well you can do math. And because you can improve this non-cognitive ability with practice, this means that if you start your training early on from childhood, you'll be able to have a greater range of improvements than those who didn't train. And that's what we're going to be focusing on right now. And we're going to focus specifically on one of the non-cognitive abilities called working memory. And there's a surprising method of training this working memory, which is tree climbing or rock climbing. So yeah, likewise in this channel, I'm going to be talking about these interesting scientific and psychological information by implementing data from scientific studies. So if you're interested in watching this video and want to watch more of my past and my future videos, then please subscribe to my channel. That would be very helpful to me. That would support me very much and that would make me very happy. And now we're going to go back to today's topic. So first, uh, let me explain what the working memory is. Working memory is basically the skill to input and output information, so the ability to remember stuff, which is an important skill when it comes to reasoning and uh, making decisions. And today's study provides evidence that working memory can be trained way more effectively than simply studying by engaging in physical activities like tree or rock climbing. So the study included 65 samples, and the researchers assigned them into three different groups. The control classroom group, which only participated in classroom lectures, and proprioceptive training group, those who participated in physical activities, and the control yoga group, who participated in yoga classes. So the samples first did a baseline test where they recalled certain digits of number backwards, and the digits gradually increased. So you would start with something like uh, 2, 9, and then you remembered it in reverse, so 9, 2. And then a digit is added, making 297, and you recall it 792, and so on and so on. The task requires active working memory, since you needed to remember the numbers and output it backwards. Everyone did this test once, and then the control classroom group participated in a two-hour classroom lecture before having the second trial. The yoga group practiced yoga for an hour, and the proprioceptive training group engaged in physical activity for about two hours, and then participated in an additional training for 2.5 hours. And by the way, this is not just any physical activity, it's specifically proprioceptive, which means physical activities that heavily requires body balance, awareness of body positioning slash movement, and awareness of strength. Examples of this includes stretching, weightlifting, martial arts, obstacle course, and of course, climbing trees and rocks. And after eliminating any possible independent variables, the, the study provided a result that showed that there was a significant improvement in the working memory between the first and the second testing. But this was only the case with the proprioceptive training group, and not the classroom study group, nor the yoga group. So why is this? Well, according to the analysis of the researchers, the proprioceptive training groups were engaged in activities with at least more than one proprioceptive factors. So if you take uh, weightlifting, for example, so let's say you're doing a bench press, right? You have to be aware of your body positioning when you lay on the bench, and your body has to balance itself in order to lift the weight upwards, and you have to be aware of your upper body locomotion as it navigates the weight, all while putting the necessary strength in your grip and tensing your hands. So you can see that it's very proprioceptively diverse. If you're constantly moving, you have to consistently take in information, remember it for a moment, visually analyze your surroundings, and adapt accordingly by either taking out the information you stored or taking in additional information. All of this contributes to the improvements of the working memory. And the improvements were not shown in the yoga groups because yoga exercises are generally proprioceptively static because you're supposed to hold a position for a certain amount of time, and you're not consistently shifting it, and it doesn't require any highly intensive visual analysis or adaptation. And that's why it's suggested that it's not cut out for a good way to improve working memory. And in contrast, tree climbing or rock climbing, whichever you prefer, is a perfect activity because you're consistently performing a diverse proprioceptive physical movements. So, you know, you're looking at your surroundings so you know where to grab onto next. And you're also keeping balance with your current position, ripping the branch or the rock 
you know, so you, so your hands don't slip. And you're calculating how far your limbs can reach or how far it can bend. And all of these requires inputting and outputting information and adapting to changes. And you're basically doing this non-stop with no rest, which serves as a tremendous contribution to the improvements of your working memory and ultimately for your non-cognitive ability. So the point of all this is that if you are a parent or planning on having a child, let them have an opportunity of climbing on at least trees in order to allow the child to have an opportunity to experience a proprioceptively diverse physical activity. And tree climbing serves as the most effective physical activity proven by science with the addition that children can engage in this activity early on compared to things like weightlifting. And also, they can do this anytime, anywhere, as long as there's trees. Unlike most team sports like soccer, where you would need at least more than, where you would need where you would need at least more than one person, and if you're already an adult, you can still improve your working memory by, of course, you know, trying to climb trees, but you can also make uh, bouldering a hobby. Because I feel like rock climbing would be too much of a jump, especially if you've been never physically active in your life, or haven't been for a while. It doesn't say it specifically in the study, but bouldering can totally be a good replacement of of rock climbing because. Because every benefit you can get to improve working memory can also be obtained from bouldering. So the major point is that non-cognitive ability, like the working memory, can be trained at any age. So you kind of don't have any excuse to not engage in physical activities if you want to improve your non-cognitive ability and become smarter in that alleyway, aka the only way of increasing your intelligence. So conclusion, like I said at the beginning of the video, when it comes to mere brain power, your levels are already predetermined by your genes, and you don't really have any method of winning against people who excel in that part of the intellect. But does this mean that because you don't have the cognitive advantage, does this mean that you'll never succeed? Of course not. If that was actually the case, then everyone who's successful would be graduates from the Ivies, which is so obviously untrue. But then people like Steve Jobs or Bill Gates were intellectually capable of succeeding at the top universities, just didn't have time for school. But my point is that you will most likely never be cognitive smarter than Jobs or Gates, but you can be pretty well off by improving your non-cognitive ability, which includes, but is not limited to, working memory. And in terms of raising children, science has proven that giving them the chance to train their non-cognitive ability is the greatest gift a parent can give to their little ones. So that's why today I'm recommending this book called Helping Children Succeed by Paul Tuff. Not a lot of parents can admit this, but there actually isn't a whole lot they can do to make their kids have a successful life. So stuff like, you know, putting kids into cram schools or a lot of the early educations doesn't really do them a lot of good. I'm not saying that's a total waste of time, but this book suggests that there are other more important things you can do as a parent, and that is putting your children in an environment where they can hone good relationships with their peers. And if I was able to hook you in just now, and if you're interested, the link to the book is in my description. Again, the book is called Helping Children Succeed by Paul Tuff. It's a really short book, so yeah, give it a read. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You've been listening to Life Study Library, hosted by me, Lai Yosh. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my Patreon. And I'll see you in another video. Bye.